Hello everyone, Nimisha here from English Com. Hope all of you are doing great. Today we'll be discussing about one of the items in your listening module, uh, which is again relatively less important, but for students who are aiming for band seven or eight, even this question is important. But for students aiming for six or 6.5, even if you, you should practice this, but you should not be wasting too much time on this item. And the item today is multiple choice, multiple answer questions in your listening module, multiple choice question, multiple answer from your listening module. We also have a similar item in your reading, multiple choice, multiple answer in the reading module. We have already done videos on those. Uh, so make sure if you have not watched them, watch them before you watch this, because it's very simpler. You can understand both the components from both of the videos. All right. So the item that we are discussing today, listening, multiple choice question, multiple answer. So in this task, what you do is you will be listening to an audio. There will be a question given to you in relevance to the to the audio. There will be three to four options given to you. You need to choose every correct option, which is answering the question. So let me share my screen with you. So before we start uh, the item in detail, let's look how important this question is, how many points it carries. So in our score distribution table, as we always look in our score distribution table, we can see the listening multiple choice question, multiple answer is the 17th item, 17th important item out of 20 questions. As we already know, we have a total of 20 question types in PT. Out of the 20, this is the 17th important question because the score is decreasing from 51.8 to 1.3. So your multiple choice, multiple answer question carries a total of 2.6 marks out of 90. You will be getting minimum two questions, maximum three questions. On average, you will get two questions. And this is an item in your listening module. It does not contribute points to any other module. All the 2.6 marks are given to your listening module itself. Okay, so if you're targeting for like 79 or 65 each, this 2.6 points can be important to you. So don't cons don't ignore this question thinking it is less important. You should practice, but of course, spend more of your time on the important question which we see on the top. All right, now coming back to the item itself. So in listening, we have a total of eight different types of questions. And out of this eight, this is the first task in your section two, multiple choice, multiple answer. Now in this task, what you do, in this section, you listen to a recording on an academic subject. You are then given a multiple choice question with three to five answer options. You could have minimum three options, maximum five answer options. You choose more than one correct answer option. That means it could be two, three, four or five, not just one. There is more than one correct answer here. You do two to three of these items depending on the combination of items in your test, which means you can get minimum two of these questions, maximum three of these questions. Each question will have three to five options out of which more than one can be correct. That is the reason why this is called multiple choice, multiple answer. Now, in this question, as we already mentioned, you will get minimum two questions, maximum three questions. And since it is multiple answer question, just like your reading module, there is negative marking. Wherever you have multiple answers, there is negative marking. Now, you'll be getting one point for one correct option minus one for each incorrect option but still the minimum score is zero. That means if you chose two options out of which one is correct, and if the other one is wrong, you will end up with plus one, minus one, zero. If you choose three options out of which two is correct and one is wrong, then you get two minus one, one point. And on the other hand, let's say you chose three, two of them wrong, one of them correct, which means you should be getting minus two plus one, which means minus one, but you will not get minus one here because the minimum score is zero. So even if you choose two wrong options and one correct option, you still get zero. At the same time, let's say you chose three options, all three wrong, you still get zero, not minus three. That means the negative marking that you have here will not affect the other questions. It will end the minimum score that you can get here is zero which is why in this question, it is always safe to choose only the options that you're 100% sure. Preferably just choose the one that you're 100% sure because most of the time, the second option that you choose could be wrong and it will negate the point that you already have. 
Okay. And as I've already mentioned regarding time management and listening, we should be spending minimum time on these kind of questions because if you spend too much time here, you will not be getting enough time for the important question types. Again, uh, there are other videos on time management, so make sure you watch them before uh, you try these questions. So in this question, the best time to spend here is try to choose the answer while you listen to the audio itself. Because as you can see, we have a total of eight different question types out of which in section two, you get seven types of questions. And each question type, you would be getting minimum two questions, minimum three questions. So in section two itself, you could be getting an average of, of around 16 questions. And for all the 16 questions together, the computer will give you somewhere around 22 to 28 minutes. The computer will not be allocating separate, separate time for each task. You are supposed to divide it among the questions based on the importance of the question. So what we have to do, only if, we, only if we spend less time on the unimportant questions, we can get enough time for the important question types. So the, the one word that we are doing today, multiple choice, multiple answer, is one of the less important question types. So you should not waste too much time there. The best option to do is, the best, uh, the way to take, the best way to save your time is to choose the answer while you listen to the audio itself. Because as you can see, this is how your question will look like. You will have an audio clip, there will be a question related to the audio with four or five options given. So while you listen to the audio, you still have your question and options on the screen. So what you can do while you listen itself, click on the answers. And anyway, the computer will not allow you to move to the next question until the audio is over. So you cannot simply click and move on immediately by skipping the question. You can't do that either because the computer does not allow you to move to the next question until the audio is over. So anyway, you have to wait. So what do you do while you listen? Try to read through the options and choose whichever is, whichever you are 100% sure of. Now, we have the audio, we have the question, and we have the options. Now, once this question appears on the screen, the audio will not start immediately. You will get few seconds initially. So during the few seconds, what you have to do is, if you're not able to read the entire thing along with the options, of course, you won't be because it's just six to seven seconds. At least read the question carefully. Because only if you read the question, you understand what are you supposed to find from the audio. And many students make a mistake here of not reading the question and clicking every option he, that they hear from the audio. Why? Because in these options here, the computer will give you options which are very similar to what is mentioned in the audio to confuse you. But it may not be answered to the question because the question will be very specific. They're asking you something very specific from the audio. Sometimes it could even be like, which of the following are true according to the audio or which of the following are not true according to the audio. So if you do not read the not true part, you could end up with choosing every option that is matching to the audio. So during the initial six to seven seconds that you get before the audio plays, make sure you read the question and answer only whatever is answering the question. Do not click everything that you hear in the audio. It should answer the question given to you. All right. Now, these are, this is the main point to remember. Choose only the options that you're 100% sure because there is negative marking and choose the only the options which are answered to the question, not everything that you hear answer to the question. All right, so let's do this. So I'll play the audio. Oops, sorry. read the question which is which of these tips about doing a good translation does the speaker mention so when you listen to the audio uh, I would suggest not to take any notes here because if you try to take your notes while you're listening you won't be able to focus on reading what is on the screen as well as listening to the audio so better thing to do is while you listen read through the options and just click on whichever you feel is 100% correct ready test four multiple choice Choose multiple answers. Page 137. One. So today I'm going to talk about the key things you need to remember when you go out into the world as translators. The first thing is to be choosy about what commissions you accept. It's not advisable to agree to do every job you're offered, even if you're in need of work. You should refuse to do something if you don't know anything about the topic as it would be impossible for you to produce a good piece of writing. And it could be serious. A mistranslation that's going to be used for medical or legal purposes could have disastrous consequences. 
Having decided you can reasonably take on a commission, if you have the slightest doubt about what something means, then consult a dictionary or someone whose mother tongue is the language you're translating from. It's much better to devote a bit of time and effort to checking something than to risk making a potentially serious error. Right, so we need to choose the correct answers. I have my answer in my mind, but I'll explain all the options for you. So the first option says, always translate from a second language into your native language. They never mentioned that in the audio. They did not say that you have to translate everything into your own native language, which is extra information, which you did not hear in the audio. So option A is definitely wrong. Now option B, ask a native speaker if you're not sure of the meaning of something. This they mentioned towards the end. If you're not sure of the meaning of a particular thing in the, in the transcript, make sure you consult a, a someone whose mother tongue is la that language, that is a native speaker. So B is a correct option. And option C says, Take care to choose the right meaning of a word if you use a dictionary. They mentioned dictionary, but they said if you do not know the meaning of something, consult a dictionary. They did not mention anything about choosing the right meaning of a word. So this part is also extra information. See, they give you options like this to confuse you with similar wordings, with similar sentence structure, but the meaning is entirely different. So option C is wrong. If you're not sure, if you're like, let's say, maybe, maybe correct, maybe wrong, like 60%, 70%, better not to mark it because we'll get negative marking if you choose the wrong one. Now, option D, don't translate technical text unless you're familiar with the subject. This was the entire gist of the audio. This is what they mentioned in the initial, almost the beginning half of the audio, they mentioned of this. If you're not familiar with the subject, especially in legal and medical cases, do not take those uh, works if you're not familiar with the subject, because if you end up with the wrong translation, it could be disastrous. That's what they said. So D is also correct for sure. And option E, ask what your translation will be used for. They did not mention anything about asking what the purpose of the translation is. Uh, so this is also extra information. So the correct answer is B and D. Ask a native speaker if you're not sure of the meaning of something because they said, consult someone whose mother tongue is the language you're translating from. And don't translate technical text unless you're familiar with the subject. You should refuse to do something if you don't know anything about the topic. This was in the initial part of the audio. Okay, see from here itself we can understand. You don't have to take notes. It's better to listen and read at the same time because if you take notes and take another extra one or two minutes after the audio to read it, then what you're doing is you're wasting your time on the unimportant questions. And if you waste your time here, you will not be getting enough time for the important questions at the end. You could run out of time and you could miss out the most important question type right from dictation, which is coming at the end of your listening part. All right. So that is your multiple choice, multiple answer task. So hope all of you are clear with the concept. So make sure you practice a little bit. I know this is not important, but don't ignore this completely. Practice as much as you could. Uh, but of course, spend more time on the more important question types. But students aiming for band seven or band eight or even more, Make sure you do a little bit of practice on this item too, even though it carries less, less score. But for students aiming for 17, and especially even one point can be very crucial because I've seen many students who get stuck at 78, missing by one point. So this question could give you that one point. So even though less important, practice a bit and spend more time on the important question types. Thank you guys. So I'll see you again with another video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and watch the other videos as well because I've already made detailed videos of all the important question types before this. Make sure you watch them and prepare yourself really well. If you need one-to-one -one feedback or if you need any corrections, um, any, any techniques or tips, any help with VT preparation, just reach us on 0432-269-874. Uh, this is Minisha from English Mom again. See you soon.